Well, Amina, back again. I'm enjoying reading these fly specs. When I set them up into my book, into my install installment, I don't read the words. I'm looking for extra periods and missed spaces and paragraphing and s layout formatting and everything like that. Now I get to read them. Next item. 0623. That's uh, June, isn't it? I'm not happy. Number 52. I'm not happy about the layer of dust that is making the brown wood surface look powdery and gray on the shelf where our atlas of the world is sitting. As I settle myself on the couch in the living room with Bailey White's book of short stories, after I get the cushion propped against the arm of the couch, and my feet up, and my neck angled just so, and after I have read the opening paragraph, of Mama Makes Up Her Mind, I feel my eyes pulling to the right, like a car with a low tire on the passenger side. Next item, 52, they're pulling, same day. They're pulling toward that shelf. A stray shaft of morning sun has just streaked in through the south window and is now skidding to a halt in the thick dust on the shelf, like a brakeless truck in a runaway ramp. The dust rises, flutters like a flock of pigeons, and settles. Darn that dust! I can't drag my eyes away from it, and when I look at it, I'm not happy. A person ought to be happy. That's one of the fundamental duties of life. If I'm happy, then my husband can be happy in my presence. My happiness radiates through my family and my friends and on and on and out until it colors the entire universe. I have made up my mind not to be unhappy today. Bailey White and I are moving out to the rocker on the front porch. That's the end of that one. Next one. Oh, same day. I must have been in a house cleaning mood. Uh, same day. This is called windows. I need to wash the rest of the windows, I know. We've been living in this house since November, and now June is wafting away, and all but a few of the windows haven't been washed yet. Why am I not washing the windows? The job will be a cinch. The black squeegee is sitting on the kitchen counter, along with a pile of pink and brown rags torn from old towels and the big red plastic jug of glass cleaner that was left in the porch cupboard by the lady who lived before me is also there. So why am I not washing the windows? Jerry will help. He'll take off the storm windows and the screens and he'll wash the outsides. Why then? I can't say that I'm pressed for time. Why? Next item is 55, maybe. Same day. The Rose of Sharon hedge has been planted along the road, over 100 whips by the time I was done. And the lilac hedge has begun, and the row of Tatarian honeysuckle. Also, the 44 Rosa rugosas. <laughs> Oy, <laughs> those are terrible things, all thorns. Also, the 44 Rosa rugosas in the banks, and the 10 Amor maples, and the Indian currant coral berries, the three Manchurian bush ap apricots are settled into the garden, with the 13 Saskatoon berry bushes, and the five blueberries, and the six heritage raspberries, and the three baba berries. I just get into those garden catalogs. <laughs> I'd order everything they've got. When they came, they weren't even as big as pencils. They called them a tree. Uh, the grass is mowed, and the first 17 roosters are tucked away in the freezer, and June is wafting away. I don't know why I'm not washing the windows. Maybe I'll do them this week. Maybe I won't. Why should I wash the windows anyway? Who cares besides me? Next item, manure tea. Uh, so June 29th, I was writing this. My friend George Michaels loves manure tea. 
When Jerry and I lived in California, we would drive up to George's place in Hornbrook to see him in his garden. If we arrived in the early morning, George would be out sloshing manure tea through the two raised beds he made when his knees got bad and his belly got too big for him to squat. George had cut up the corrugated sides of a backyard swimming pool to make those beds, and they were two feet high. Have a look at my bell peppers, he'd say to us, without first saying hello. George's pepper plants were always bigger and more vigorous than mine. You could make manure tea, he'd say, stirring the cloudy brew with a piece of old pipe. You've got plenty of roosters. He'd have that in a 40-gallon barrel. <laughs> a great big barrel of stuff. <sighs> Next item. I didn't. But I didn't ever make any manure tea. One day, we arrived at George's, after the shade was gone from the garden. George had handfuls of long, green, Egyptian onion tops draped around the collar of his shirt and over his ears. Fly repellent, he said. Then he showed us two quart sealers standing in the raised beds, each one three-quarters full of fat, buzzing, green-bellied flies, iridescent green. You could make a trap like mine, he said, and he told me what to use for bait and how to make the holes in the lid of the, of the sealer. But I didn't ever make one. I didn't want a fly trap. I knew that however hard I tried, George's flies would always be way bigger and way more vigorous and way more iridescent than mine. Golly, time to quit again, up to seven minutes. Woo! Yeah, maybe I should make longer cuts. We're yellow button right here. <laughs>